In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won over the crowds. Then they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. The next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, then on to Iconium and Antioch. There they strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, It is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. And after they had appointed elders for them in each church, with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the Lord in whom they had come to believe. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. When they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Attalia. From there they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had completed. When they arrived, they called the church together and related all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith for the Gentiles. And they stayed there with the disciples for some time. The word of the Lord. <coughs> all your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants. Bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power. To make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all things living with plenty. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over those who love him, but all the wicked shall he destroy. 
My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name for ever and ever. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last and the living one, says the Lord. I was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. Alleluia. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said to the disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today the Church commemorates Dom Gregory Dix, an Anglican monk from the Benedictine House at Nashton, and a liturgical scholar of huge repute, whose magnum opus written in the 40s the shape of the liturgy runs to nearly 800 pages and is still essential reading. Towards the end of all that scholarship, Dix allows himself a certain amount of purple prose and on this commemoration it seems perhaps appropriate to let him talk today. And then give a little comment, a very little comment at the end. Jesus had told his friends to do this henceforward with the new meaning for the anamnesis, remembrance, invocation of him, and they have done it always since. Was ever another command so obeyed? For century after century, spreading slowly to every continent and country and among every race on earth, this action has been done in every conceivable human circumstance, for every conceivable human need, from infancy and before it, to extreme old age and after it, from the pinnacles of earthly greatness to the refuge of fugitives in the caves and dens of the earth. Men have found no better thing to do than this for kings at their crowning and for criminals going to the scaffold, for armies in triumph or for a bride and bridegroom in a little country church, for the proclamation of a dogma or for a good crop of wheat, for the wisdom of the parliament of a mighty nation or for a sick old woman afraid to die. For a schoolboy sitting an examination, or for Columbus setting out to discover America. For the famine of whole provinces, or for the soul of a dead lover. In thankfulness, because my father did not die of pneumonia. For a village headman, much tempted to return to fetish because the yams had failed. Because the Turk was at the gates of Vienna for the repentance of Margaret, for the settlement of a strike, for a son, for a barren woman, for Captain so-and-so, wounded and prisoner of war, while the lions roared in the nearby amphitheatre on the beach at Dunkirk, while the hiss of sighs in the thick June grass came faintly through the windows of his church. Tremulously, by an old monk, on the 50th anniversary of his vows, 
furtively by an exiled bishop who had hewn timber all day in a prison camp near Murmansk. Gorgeous for the canonization of St. Joan of Arc. One could fill many pages with the reasons why men have done this and not tell a hundredth part of them. And best of all, week by week and month by month on a hundred thousand successive Sundays, faithfully, unfailingly, across all the parishes of Christendom, the pastors have done just this. To make the holy people of God. And the fact is that every time this mystery is celebrated, Christ's body, the church, is remade by Christ's body, given in bread and wine. And as you join in, remotely, virtually, and above all, spiritually, you too are remade with me. As you share Jesus' self-offering to the Father, an offering in which we are taken up and included, and receive Jesus' self-offering of himself to each of us, to whom? With the Father and the Holy Spirit, be praise and glory for ever and ever. Amen. By shedding his blood for us, Christ gathered together a new people from every corner of the earth. Let us pray to him. Lord, graciously hear us. Christ, our Redeemer, be mindful of your church across the world. On this commemoration of all called to the rule of St. Benedict, of those who teach liturgical studies, in our communion of the Burundian Diocese of Muyinga, the Tanzanian Diocese of Zanzibar, and the Nigerian Diocese of Ikuo, of Pezim, Michael, and Kenneth, the bishops of the clergy and of the people. We pray with others in this diocese for Martin, our bishop. And in this place, we give thanks for the prayers of our brothers and sisters across the diocese today, committing this parish and all our work to you. Lord, graciously hear us. Christ, our King, may the whole world come to know your love. We pray for our Sovereign Lady, the Queen, for her family, and for all set in authority under her, for all who contribute by profession or volunteering to the common good in our national life. We pray for the coming of your kingdom of peace and of justice, praying especially at this time for the Yemen, for Hong Kong, for Libya, as also for those who seek to bring and keep the peace among them the forces of the crown, presently on active service, and those enforcing the European arms blockade of Libya. Lord, graciously hear us. Christ, our joy and strength, sustain us and those we know and love. We pray in our parish partnership for Christchurch, for Father David Charles and his people. In our own parish, on his birthday, for Lucas Beale. For ourselves, as for all Christian people. 
for grace to adore you in this holy sacrament ever more deeply. Lord, graciously hear us. Christ, our strength and solace, be with the suffering and needy. With those persecuted for your name's sake. With, the, with all infected and affected by this pandemic. With those who seek to serve them and meet their needs. And those responsible for health care and health policy. We pray among the sick for Alan Cooper, for Aileen, for Janet, for Gordon Smith, Sheila Irvin, Mary Sabapathy, Margie Fitter, Christina Wilkinson, Richard Parr, Lindsay Murray, Dorothy Barnett, <coughs> and John Rylands. We hold before you today Eunice Bears and Michaela Hardman. Those named on our prayer cross and those born on our own hearts. Lord, graciously hear us. Christ, our hope and glory, we give thanks for all your sins. Remember those who have gone before us on the path to eternal life, among whom we pray for Dorothy Barnett, Catherine Dunce, Betty Field, Josephine Williams, Johanna Huss, Peter Jennings also on her year's mind for Linda Fitton and for those who have lost their lives in the pandemic. Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine forth. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Christ, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you for your love's sake. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither <clears throat> let them be afraid. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest, and make yourself known afresh in the breaking of the bread, who are our God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts to give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good, always and everywhere, 
to give you thanks, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, because Christ, our pastoral sacrifice, has made us children of the light, rising to new and everlasting life. He has opened the gates of heaven to receive his faithful people. His death is our ransom from death. His resurrection is our rising to life. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world, while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, Send your Holy Spirit, that this bread, broken and wine out poured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we offer with confidence <coughs> his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with St. Mary the Virgin, St. George the Great Martyr, with Gregory Dix, and with all your sins, to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Alleluia. Christ, our Paschal sacrifice, has been offered for us, so let us keep the feast.
For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.